right now. And I'm gonna hand it over to you, Teresa. So feel free to introduce yourself and let us tell us how to make some soup. From Oneida. Um, my mother is Wolf Clan mother for Odat Set. Um, one of the responsibilities of Odat Set is to we the um, uh, we have two arrows. Uh, one is to provide for the nation, and one is to uh, protect the nation. So it's kind of in our blood to to feed people to. Um, that responsibility of taking care of our um, food source and, and protecting the people. Um, so it kind of um, comes naturally, I guess. Um, one of the things that um, you will need for the rest of your life is a good set of cooking knives. So this one, I paid $8 for this at Canadian Tire last night, but it has, um, different uh, knives in there. So we can use those today. Um, I found this, um, I was looking more into traditional foods and foods that we used to eat um, to feed our spirits. Um, and I came across Three Sisters Soup, but it um, was kind of plain and kind of, <laughs> I modified it a little bit. Um, so. We've put um, Hubbard squash into this soup and it's a lot richer and it has a high vitamin C content, vitamin A content um, with the other squash. Um, this one just adds so much more rich flavor to our soup. So we're going to um, start with that. I usually bake it first so we don't boil all the vitamins out of it. Um, when I'm in a hurry, I just put this whole squash in the oven hole and, and bring it out and let it cool off. So then you can just peel the skin off basically and clean the um, inside guts out, um, seeds out. Um, but we're gonna cut it today and that'll be one of the first thing we do. So we have uh, the oven preheated to 350 to start baking this squash. And we have the pot of hot water on to cook the corn. Um, we're gonna get the sharp knife, we'll make um, cooking a lot easier. Um, so we're going to slice this down the middle. Um, there'll be uh, pictures attached after to show the process. We cut the squash in half and then we can scoop the seeds out. I usually save all the seeds and drive my children crazy because I have seeds all over the house packed. Um, but I usually generally keep the seeds from and compost all the shell part. And the squash goes right back to our um, creation story. Um, when, when Sky Woman was killed, um, they said the squash grew out of her remains from the, her stomach and the corn and the beans grew um, from her body. Uh, so that's all right back to our creation story. So once you get them cut in half and cleaned out, and we're going to put those in the oven for about half an hour to bake. and we can get started on, on the other parts we need for it. So we're gonna cut the other butternut squash up. Um, the easiest way I found them was to slice it And I'm going to try to slow down because I usually cook really fast, but I'll try to slow down. And some people throw that whole bottom part out. Um, 
I generally don't throw any part out. If it's too much sloth, then I'll boil it and freeze it and add it to um, a different food. So, uh, we um Trustage soup wasn't in, we didn't eat it around Oneida up to like five years ago, um, not that long ago, but we kind of um, introduced it back um, to our community. We're going to just um, continue peeling the rind off of these. Um, we're trying to get more traditional foods back um, into our community. I when talked to a, a seer about 10 years ago, and she said one of the reasons after diabetes we're going to suffer with um, depression and anxiety, and she told me that's going to come from not eating our traditional foods. So we're trying for our children's health, we're trying to get more um, traditional foods back into our community. Um, and, and it's just a matter of people doing it. Um, me and my kids, like I wasn't taught just at home. I don't, my mother never taught me how to cook or sew or stuff, but I decided for myself, like, this is what I want to learn and these are our foods and I'm going to, um, I'm going to wake those up and um, carry them on to the next generation so we can just peel them and of course watch them nice so they're really short. We just keep slicing them. I think I'll leave the end ones. These ones you can just bake even or you can peel them. Um, a, a lot of things we're trying to wake back up we didn't have um moon ceremonies and like i was told it was um ojibwe teachings and um thinking comfort common sense tells me that we have a connection to a, our grandmother moon and um so one of our elders from our community stood up and she said yeah i i remember having full moon teachings um with my grandmother so now we've started doing um full moon ceremonies back in Oneida. So we have to like think for ourselves and say, well, this common sense is we have that connection to our grandmother moon and all our stories. So why wouldn't we have a ceremony to reconnect with her and reconnect with our foods that are in our in our stories? Um, so one of the things that squash and pumpkin do and from our creation story, they say that the squash came from um, Guy Woman's or stomach organs. So when we look at the health benefits of um, squash and pumpkins, it fixes your stomach. Um, I had a little puppy that was sick and I took her to the vet and the vet told me, um, you can buy this expensive can of treatment for your puppy 
or you can go to the dollar store and get a can of pumpkin puree and add it to your dog's food and it'll um, and fix your dog's stomach. So when we know our stories and we know um, the health benefits, um, so if you can even just keep a little can of dog uh, pumpkin mix around for, it'll be for your dog, for your stomach. So these will really help um, your stomach to have all the healthy bacteria and all the um, things to work. I was um, watching a video. I'm trying to learn more about um, aging in, um, in the body. Right now, um, we're learning that type 2 diabetes has a connection to Alzheimer's. So knowing that, like what can, can we do to prevent Alzheimer's and type 2 diabetes, and it's um, going back to our traditional foods. Um, so we just want to cut these all up into a few things. Um, I've talked to a lot of women that do organic planting, so we have this one cut up. Um, and what they're going to do next year is when they keep their seeds and they're going to put these in their mouth and connect to their, connect their DNA to the seeds. So when they plant the seeds, these seeds of squash next year are going to provide all the nutrients that their DNA needs. So we're that connected to our um, foods. Uh, so when I picked my medicines, I buried my girls' belly buttons behind my mom's house. So when I pick medicines for them, for my family, I pick medicines from near where I planted their belly buttons because their DNA is in that ground and their DNA spreads out to those medicines and they'll get um, ancestral healing from, from the plants that I pick for them. So we have most of those. Um, also, we're gonna we have a bowl and we'll just put the um, <coughs> bottle in the bowl that we're ready to start cooking. Uh, you can put your corn in raw if you don't have it cooked. <laughs> so if you don't want to, um, you can use frozen corn or corn in a can, um, whatever is most convenient for you. Um, um, and our, our ancestors knew so much. For, um, so they pick sweet corn in the morning. So when you pick your own sweet corn, the sugars are less in the morning. So if you, for our bodies, there's um, a lot less sugar content if your corn's picked in the morning. Uh, but nobody um, has the room or availability to grow their own sweet corn. So um, we just have to do the best we can and do, um, if you want fresh corn, you can put it in um, fresh, just cut it down. I'm going to boil these ones just a little bit just to get it cooking. Again, you don't have to get fresh corn, you can use frozen little bit corn or in the can. I'm just going to boil these down a little bit to get them started. And I'll just um, try to slow down a little bit because they know I talk fast and I cook fast and I'm wolf clan and it's <laughs> basically um, like all the compost. Um, I try to take all the food products in. Um, right now we have a really stinky dump problem in Oneida. And if we could um, get a compost pile going in Oneida, the food that you throw in your garbage is what makes the, gar the, gar the dump stink. So if we could connect in Oneida and get a composting started in Oneida, the desk, the Dump would be less stink. Um, so I generally take all my compost in. I'm 
We're going to use any kind of beans, um, palm string beans. We can use frozen. I'm just going to rinse it off. You just take a handful and cut the ends off, turn them around, and cut the other ends off. I'm just going to um, slow down a little bit. I know people are probably trying to catch up. Um, we had to have everything, we have everything ready. Again, if you follow, if we follow our um, traditional food cycle, this would be our harvest foods and having so it's so high in vitamin C and vitamin A. That would get you ready for the winter, um, so your immune system. So right now you could be um, have all these fall harvest vegetables to build up your immune system, and uh, so basically we knew that our bodies are geared to follow our traditional cycles. And getting back to um, our traditional foods. And I know being being young, like you don't really um, worry about the processed foods that we're eating, or um, how it's going to affect your body later. Um, so right now I'm 58, and I'm having to go back and readjust my whole system because of all the. Um, manufactured foods that I ate. So I'm trying to switch my um, diet back to a healthier um, diet, which means cooking, cooking a lot more. Um, and going back to those um, traditional foods of women, um, Maybe about five years ago, we um, we, were, we were missing a few ceremonies from our longhouse. So we're trying to reintroduce them back. We're trying to wake those up too, and trying to um, get all all of our ceremonies back. And one of the ones we were missing was our um, sea ceremony. Um, so we. Basically, learned the songs behind the cookhouse and walked over to the longhouse and just started doing it. Um, and when we were singing those songs, um, I could feel a vibration going up my arm and rattle like when we were singing those songs. And it just amazed me that if it's doing that to me, like what does that do to the seeds that we're planting? The um, all the energy that's going into those seeds. So um, we're trying to. Um, teach more young girls their seed songs and that they can go back to their gardens and um, sing to their, their gardens and just reconnect with the spirit of your food. Um, I'm listening to the words from the, uh, the seer that I talked to, like, and that's where we're at. McDonald's is fast. Whatever kind of food you want to order is fast, but 
in the long run, what are we doing to our bodies? Um, so if you can go back to um, even talking to our foods. I went to an organic concert in Guelph, and the woman I sat next to, I'm not sure if she was Mennonite, or, but she sat there and took that time to pray with her food. And um, I was thinking when, when my children were young, used to um, they used to sit and pray with their candy. And they would pray with their um, candy and they would um, tell it to pass through their body and not to absorb all the chemicals and the dyes and the coloring. So in order for them to have candy, they would they would have to talk to it first and tell their bodies not to absorb it and talk to the candy and, and thankful for the candy, but to leave the bad parts from um, going into their body. Um, I was just watching a special on fruit toast and like all the harmful things that we're putting into our body. So um, this will make a pretty big pot of soup. So you can freeze some of it too. Um, and don't wait till you're my age to <laughs> start thinking like, okay, I could have taken better care of myself. Uh, now I'm going to have to turn around and go back and and look at what I did wrong and change that in my own mind. So um, this was one of the foods that we started with. So the beans are cut up. The corn is cooked just, just enough to take the dryness out of it. You don't have to cook it. Um, I just choose to. Um, the way I found that I like to eat it. So you can modify the recipe if you don't like greens that much. If you want to put a couple in, you don't have to use the same amount that I made. Um, again, you can just use the butternut squash. And I like the Hubbard squash um, that has twice as much vitamin C in it. But if you don't like, it's really thick and it's really dense and it's really um, just packed with nutrients. And you can boil it if you want. Um, I just found it a lot easier to bake it in the oven and then scoop the, the um, meaty part out of it. And if I'm in a hurry again, I just put the whole squash in and cut it in half when it comes out and pulls off. So I left the water boiling from the corn. So I'm going to add the squash. That another squash that we cook. I'm going to add that to the boiling water. Um, they were asking me about my apron too, and what it says on here is, "You go with me, little squash." And, and what that means is she picks your spirit up. Um, and for us, like when we're cooking food, um, that's to love our family, to nurture our family. Um, when we cook at the cookhouse, um, it's, it's a rule that we have there not to have negative energy around our food when we're cooking. So. I know at times I've been chased out of the kitchen because I was in a bad mood. But they say you put, if you're in a bad mood and you're cooking, you'll put that bad mood into your food. So we try to um, uh, either stay away or acknowledge to people that 
maybe you need to go um, sit outside or um, figure out why why you're not in a, a good mood. So, and like when we're we're in a good mood, then that really makes your food taste that much better too, and um, you're gonna get so much more nutrients from it. We were looking at um, fry bread, and I make really good fry bread, but it's not good for me. So I'm trying to cut down on how much I make, um, and then thinking, well, how did that get to be part of our traditional food? But um, back in the days um, in Oneida, we had all our own cattle, sheep, pigs, cows. Um, I think it was in the 40s that the government came in and said, all your animals are diseased. So they killed off all the animals. Then residents in Oneida had to survive on commodities. So that was government bringing in flour and salt and sugar and um, basically all the things that are killing us today. Um, but I was thinking back like when we're, we're trying to survive and all you have is flour, um, what, what a ben benefit that was for our people just to help us survive. Um, but we're in a lot more food security time. So um, we need to get back to our traditional foods and not just um, fiber isn't our traditional foods, but it's, it's having to, and I know it's gonna be expensive because you can't like, buy fresh fruit and buy fresh beans. Um, there's ways and things that we can do to help supplement that. So a lot of times when I get corn, then I'll freeze it. I'll put it into sections and freeze it. Um, if I cook extra squash in here, I'll cut up, I'll take a couple cups out and I'll freeze it. And then I can mix it with wild rice and um, kale. Um, and that has so much iron. So just to parch it. <laughs> and um, My daughter and her father thought they could just throw beans in a bag and freeze them. <laughs> So, and um, you have to kill all the bacteria on it. So the beans kind of rotted in the freezer. So just knowing that you have to give it a little boil. And if you want to take a scoop out now and, and freeze that cup of squash and then put it into another meal. So just learning like little tricks to freeze. freeze. You could freeze half the corn if you didn't want a big pot. You could cook it and freeze it. Your beans, you can boil them and um, take another cup out and freeze that, so you don't have, so they don't go to waste in your fridge. Let me check on the um, squash and the oven. No, they're almost done. So we're um, building up our, our immune system with this soup and um, all the benefits of your um, you feel like Fix your stomach. You help your body keep working with the health organism. We can just mix all and wait for the, the squash to get more. Maybe you can just buy the even already cut up squash at the grocery store. And put that in a pot and cook that. That's that's the same thing. Um, I just like the the flavor that um, the Hubbard squash adds, and it's that was just um, purely on how I liked it. We were talking about different um, three sister soup, um, and then we had three sister soup from a chef in Toronto, and he, he left the green rind on the um, butternut squash. Uh, or some people won't like that. It probably added a lot more um, vitamins to your soup. So just um, working those with, with those ingredients, even when um, we made corn soup and it wasn't just strictly one way, we added so many different beans and, um, and items to that. So it's, I know Oneida is pretty well known for their corn soup. <laughs> Getting this way from adding different things to it. Um, but personally, if, if you're cooking for yourself and your family, um, 
you know what kind of vitamins they need and what what they're willing to eat. Once these um, wash gets a little bit more cooked in the pot, you can mash them with a potato masher or um, what I've already pureed corn, pureed squash. Um, so I buy a, a emulsifier and that'll really mash them up. Right now, basically, those wash will probably be about 10 more minutes. Um, I don't know if you have any questions or anything so far. Or yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to unmic yourself and ask them or throw them in the chat while we're waiting for our squash to bake up. Hi, I have a question. Um, do we cook pre-cook the beans or do we just leave them aside? They usually cook pretty quick. Um, they'll take like five, ten minutes in a pot to cook. Um, so I basically wait. It's just the corn um, cooks a little different in a pot, so I usually just cook it before, but the beans will cook really quick. Okay, and I just add my corn to it that's already pre-cooked that I just did. Yeah, or from a can or frozen. Okay. All of them are fine. I might add in another can of corn just because I only have two kernels here, just to give it a little bit more. Yeah, however you like, you can add, add more. This is just the basic recipe, so if you like more beans, you can add more beans. If you like, if you don't like the Hubbard squash, then you can just go with this um, other squash. So you were going so fast, and I'm a yeah. cook, and I like to cook. And then I'm, I put my towels, linen, on the stove and it caught fire while I was while I was watching and all of a sudden I just smell smoke and I was like what is that <laughs> so oh, I gotta slow down <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll try slow down too yeah I usually cook really fast like <laughs> I really just cut and put in a pot and done <laughs> when you have five hungry kids and you have to <laughs> cook fast and any questions Sadie what did we do with the butternut squash? You were going so fast. I was like, I just you barely got it that, scooped. Uh, that's Hubbard. Oh, well, did we put this in the oven? We did, but you can peel it and cut it up and put it in with the um, other squash. Okay. So what goes in the oven? The Hubbard. So it's I put that in now. I put it in now. It's going to take a bowl half an hour to cook but if you want to just peel it and cut it up and put it in with your other squash it'll catch up okay so do i just turn the oven off then i won't need it for anything else yep okay okay quick question um the squash that we're boiling how long is it in there for I'm sorry, what? The squash that we're boiling, how long does it boil it for? Um, if you want to stab it with a knife or a fork and pull it soft. Okay. All right. If you didn't get the, um, anybody else didn't get the Hubbard squash in, you don't really need it. I just like the added flavor and added uh, vitamin C that it has. It's really rich and really dense in vitamin C. Sorry guys, uh, my video is frozen. So while we're waiting for the um, for the squash to um, finish up, so like five more minutes, right? Is what you're saying. Uh, I'm just going to really quickly try to fix that. So you might see us leave, but we will be right back.
viewers to invite their name to the provost. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. Just hang tight for a second. We're just getting, <laughs> we're getting Teresa back on. We're recording from uh, two different computers. So, um. Um, do you guys remember how long the squash stays on the stove for? Not the one in the oven, the one on the stove. Oh, so what she was saying, I guess you probably didn't hear that if it froze. Um, she said to take a, um, a fork or a knife and to um, stab the squash. And when it's soft, that's when you know that it's done. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. check mine out because it looks like it goes. Yeah, so there wasn't an exact time frame on that. Just when you. you put a, um, yeah, a fork or a knife through and it, it goes I, through. So. I had a question. Uh, did we use the butter at any time? <laughs> I don't think we've used the butter yet. I was say, what is the butter for? Because I did get a butter in my kit, but I don't remember her saying anything about butter. <laughs> Everyone got butter. I have actually never made three sisters soup either, so I'm learning as well today. So I'm waiting to see what the butter is for as well. So we we're just waiting to see what the butter. My guess, if I was to guess, is you know how hi. <laughs> um, you sometimes add it into the. Um, What's it called? Like, you know, you add it into like add like a creaminess to it at the end. Yeah. Or okay. When it's, like, everything's yes. cooked, maybe. Yes, that would be my guest, but I'm also not sure. So, oh, I think Zita is back. Another question. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Can I ask this question? So, do I leave the water that the butternut squash was cooking in? Like, do we save that as a broth? I did, yeah. Where I cooked the corn. No, yeah, the corn I cooked already, and then the butternut squash is done. Do I save the water? Yeah, we'll just mash it. Oh, oh Tree, uh, Teresa, we also had another question, which was, what are we doing with the butter, or is that coming up? Um, I wasn't sure if everybody had butter. Um, all, before, I bake, before I bake the um, Hubbard squash, I usually put butter on it. And let the butter bake in and you can put salt and pepper on it while it's baking i'm sorry i should have told you that i'm just trying to lessen the um salt and pepper that goes into everything so a lot of you put butter on now yeah you can it'll melt right in. okay so they can put butter on now that it's coming out of the oven mm -hmm. okay they were, they were just curious um, as to we were all curious as to the butter so <laughs> yeah, and some people like they'll use um chicken broth instead of water um but then that goes from vegan and like the butter will take it from not being vegan anymore it'll be still be vegetarian but if you add chicken breast some people cook it with chicken broth but then that's not going to be um vegetarian and then if you add the butter then it takes it from being vegan to um we add all those. So depending on like who we cook for at the cookhouse, we've had to cook for um, vegans, and that got a little complicated, and we had to learn what's involved in, in vegan food. So uh, yeah, and then some people do like to cook it in um, chicken broth, like in the box that you get from the grocery store in chicken broth. But I prefer to do that as a vegetarian soup. Um, you talked about you talked about freezing like um, various ingredients individually. Does it freeze well as a soup? Like once it's all yeah, it does. It, it freezes really well. Okay, awesome. Thank right you. Right now, you can take a cup full of um, your squash out and let it cool off and then freeze that. And lots of times, that's what I would do because when you get the um, butternut squash, mm -hmm. they're huge. Like you can get one and they'll feed like thirty people. 
but they're so huge. So even if like, but they're really cheap right now. So if you want to um, get, if you get a, uh, right now they had a farmer in Mount Bridges that was giving away mountains of butternut squash. And if you want to, anybody want to go pick it up, they can just fill their car with butternut squash. So, um, yeah, so if you put too much, then just freeze it. There's some good wild rice and kale recipes or uh, different recipes that you can just make pure squash soup even. Cool, that's awesome, thank you. I have a question too, again. Um, do you ever add meat to this recipe? I remember having somebody made three sister soup and they called it three sisters and a brother <laughs> and they I can't remember what kind of soup they had or what kind of meat maybe it was like um ham or something like from corn soup yeah maybe yeah uh, I've never tried it um but they probably yeah they could you could add whatever you want into it depending yeah, if, if you like meat into it you could add like a ham or even a ham bone and cook it with that Okay. Um, our squash is almost done in the pot, so we're going to give it a couple mashes. Just get it. Um, what did what did we do with our beans? We put them in with our squash or oil. In right now, yeah, I mashed the squash a little bit. No, what did we do with our beans? We boiled them, not yet. Oh, okay. So the beans, um, I cut up. Did you get them cut up? I'm just cutting them now. We cut them in half, probably bite size, so and like in thirds. So we cut the tips off of it. Cut the tips off and then cut it into bite-sized pieces. Yeah. Okay. And then we don't boil them yet. Um, I'm going to boil them now. I don't know if you can see the um. Sorry. I mashed up the squash that much. You can squash it right into the puree if you want. So I'm going to add the um corn and the beans to that now. And then while that's cooking, we're going to clean out the um, covered squash. Uh, I, if you have an ice cream scoop, an ice cream scoop works really good because it's got kind of a sharper edge to it. But just a regular spoon works too. So if you can even see how much darker and um, But it's so much darker orange. So the darker orange it is, the more high it is in vitamin C. So this will get you, um, help you get for the flu season and colds. This will be high in that. And this is like how we traditionally ate. Like fall time would be eating all these foods to to maintain our health. And even if you get, I'm gonna throw that in. It's a little green part on there, but when you when it's cooked, it's really soft, so that won't be hard to chew at all. And even if we could get our babies um, eating food like this instead of um, in containers, I remember the first time I took um, my grandson to ceremonies and I was weird, but I would chew up um, buffalo meat and I would chew up little um, elk, whatever kind of deer meat. I would chew it up so it was a mulch and then I would put it in his mouth and he would just slap the table. <laughs> he thought it was so good and he would take a bite and he'd slap the table every time he had a bite. 
um, so like our traditional foods have so much more, um, you think of what a deer eats out in the woods, it eats all medicine plants and it eats, um, and it's spirits free. I know um, a lot of the elders talk about um, eating beef, that it's all, it's all, it's not free roaming where a deer has its spirits free roaming. It's running through, through the um, woods. Um, so the disease said, how, how do you want your spirit to be? It's, it's going to be by the food you eat. But I like the steak. <laughs> we had a pretty good steak the other day. So. But it's, it's, it's all about limiting, limiting, um, limiting um, organic or you can just see where it's all scooped out of there. And that took about half an hour so you could, um, to prepare that. So that's in the oven for about half an hour. Does it matter if you kept if you keep some of the skin on like I'm scooping mine out and the skin's so soft it's kind of coming off with it. Yeah, Is uh, that... That's what I was going to do too. Can you see that? I have some yeah. of the skin on there but that's going to go in a pot too. Okay cool. And it'll just it'll work along with the squash to um, feed, feed and nourish your body. And I don't know if anybody else cleans their squash this way, but I just found it easier because these squash are so hard and a lot of people to peel it would be next to impossible. Um, and I just like to just throw them in the oven. And I did that with a bunch of um, pumpkin squash, pumpkin squash, pumpkin um, pie, the smaller pumpkins. So I threw like five or six of them in the oven and I just baked them. And then I got them out and then, um, cut them in half and clean the seeds out and then they could just scoop all the pumpkin puree out. So I froze a lot of um, pumpkin this year um, just for our, our puppy too for her benefit so if she had any problems then I could just take a little scoop of pumpkin out and pumpkin mix out and give it to her and then just um, trying to eat a little healthier for myself. So we have an over, like a, a review of all the instructions so far. Uh, were we supposed to take the butternut squash out of the, the boiling water? No, I just mashed it. Oh, okay. And then I added the corn and the beans to it. Okay. And you could leave it at that and, and eat that. Um, I just mm -hmm. like the, I like the Hubbard squash though. So. When I make it, that's what I add to it, and it's 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 just really really high in vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And if you're okay with it, like I would eat those. Um, like I don't have a problem with there being a little uh, rind on it. And again, like there's so much nutrients in the rind too. And I think that's the thing we have to remember is like we're connected to our food. We're connected to um, the earth here. Um, and we need to reconnect with our, our, with our foods to be healthy. Um, and that's what the, the game of the seer told me is that our brains aren't going to be nourished. Our, um, we're not going to have the vitamins that we need. And we're going to be depressed. And we're going to be suffering from anxiety, and it's going to be it's going to be a challenge to get like teenagers to eat a soup like that. Uh, or even if we just try and gradually introduce more squash, maybe beans on a different thing, and then mix it together. So I know that's what my kids said. Oh, whatever I cook is what they have to eat. So 
it's going to be a challenge for get a lot of younger kids to um, just buy into eating healthier when you can get McDonald's so quick. But in the long run, what's that doing to their anxiety and their their minds? Um, because your mind is developing up until you're like 23 years old. So you're still getting, um, your brain is still growing. So if we can get our traditional foods, that's gonna feed their spirit, I'm gonna feed their brain, I'm gonna feed your organs. So just, this is the Hubbard squash, and it's a little, Still a little chunky, but I'm gonna put it in and it'll finish cooking the rest of the way in. And you could have added butter in here or salt and pepper. So just trying to get a closer picture. So if you leave it cooking longer, it'll um, the squash will get more uh, liquidy and chunks. But if you're okay with eating chunks of squash, then you could eat that now, or we're gonna let it cook a little bit longer and just blend together more. So that's um, basically done. I don't know if you have any more questions or. Once that cools off, you can even freeze half of it if it's too much and just have it for a rainy day or um, whenever you don't want to cook. Just have it all, all ready to go. Mm -hmm. Again, I didn't add any salt or pepper or butter, but you can add that however much you like. And yeah, just learning different ways to um, cook with like the Hubbard. You look at it and it's kind of intimidating to see this big squash home home and cook the squash and um, just throw it in the oven. And I've cooked them outside like by a fire. Um, just place them by a fire so they would get roasted on one side and turn it and then keep turning it. So there's different um, different ways that you can figure it out and didn't use my purifier, I mean emulsifier. <laughs> That's okay. Does anyone want to show off their soup? I'm like a discombobulated voice, but <laughs> I know I might have lost a few people because I just work fast and talk fast and it might have been hard to keep up when you first time making it. And again, she's recording this, so um, and we're sending um, a booklet with pictures. So if you want to try it again, and uh, you know, it's hard to be prepared and have everything ready when you've never cooked it before. I did it. Can you see? <laughs> I added butter. I like um. <laughs> I added all the butter. I <laughs> don't know if that was supposed to happen, but I can't stop eating this Hubbard squash. 
It's so right. good. Like even with a bit of this, this, the skin on, you, you can eat it. Very good. Thank you. Miigwech. Oh, just want to show us your soup. This is mine so far. I don't know how to make it put down. Then I have some more butternut over here. I'm going to try to freeze it, save it. I have a baby, right? So I always get the squash. Oh, yeah, I love that. I'm just waiting now. <laughs> oh, are you going to show us your soup? You're on mute. Yeah, sorry. Give me one sec. So, I made a I made a big old pot because like I, all my roommates. It's my roommate's birthday today too, so let's to try something new. Anyone else want to show off your stoop? Now's the time to brag a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and once you try it, like if you, if you don't like as much beans or if you don't like as much corn, just um, just set it up and cook it the way that you like it the best. I just happen to love Hubbard squash. <laughs> What other kinds of things do you make with the Hubbard squash? Um, I like that wild rice and, and kale, and you cut it all up and um, you can kind of pan fry it, especially if, it, if your squash is cooked. Okay, you can just add that on it and add that to um, some wild rice. So cook your wild rice separate and then um, I kind of fry up the, the kale. Mm -hmm. So then you have like a lot of iron and a lot of um, protein and a lot of vitamin C, so it'll be like, and you can Google it. I Google a lot of um, recipes. You mean like the pumpkin muffins? We made a lot of pumpkin muffins that were just beautiful. And for your pets, you can save your pumpkin for your pets. Annika, are you going to show off your soup? No, I was just going to say, my Hubbard squash didn't cook as fast as everyone else's. So I'm still yeah. waiting to get it. Yeah, and, and I was trying to slow down because it does take a while, half an hour, maybe 45 minutes to cook. Yeah, because I put it that's in a... That's what happened. But, mm -hmm. but that's okay. I think it's close now, so. <laughs> I had one half that was cooked, and then the other half, like the lid, wasn't cooked yet. So I just kind of cut it up and then added it to the soup, I'm sure. It was, kind of, it was smaller pieces and it was kind of softer. Yeah, usually I cut it in uh, like fourths. So I'll cut it in half and then cut it two more times and then be like that so it cooks a little faster. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, because one half is almost soft enough to scoop. So I think I'll wait for that and then cut up the other side. And the Hubbard are like so hard, so hard to cut. It's like, um, yeah, you have to have a really sharp knife and it's like I have big hands and can hold the hover like to cut it. <laughs> I think this is the first I used uh, Hubbard in, oh my gosh, I can't even remember when. I'm older, so maybe like 20 years. <laughs> yeah, I did, did that for Thanksgiving for my grandma. Made it all for her. Mm. I think Mish Dish did a really nice recipe too with, um, like salad, and then a, a vinaigrette on the salad, and and did like the slices of squash on top. So there's a lot of different things you can do with it. Um. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. Like I um, 
I wasn't really taught how to cook much when I was a kid. And so even though I'm like in my 30s now, I've literally never made a soup from scratch before. I never cooked with Hubbard, Hubbard squash. So um, thank you. You're welcome. Chloe, do you want to show off your soup? Right a little bit? <laughs> Actually, I'm at a friend's place and couldn't find everything. So it's almost ready. It's like all ready to go. But I need to like put it in the oven once my friend gets home. I literally can't find a pot in, in her kitchen. So um, oh, oh, I'm going to make it. <laughs> and, and just like, um, like, like I wasn't taught when I was a young either. And that was um, a lot with like my mom had to work and my mom was um, taking care of us. And my mom, we were in survival mode when I was growing up. So it was all about surviving. And now we have a little bit more time where I can spend with my kids and teach them what, um, so it's, uh, it's all up to you. Like, do you want to learn if you want to, mm -hmm. if you want. It's, like, easier, it's, it's easier to learn when, um, when there's like a video and when it's like a conversation as opposed to like, um, as opposed to like just following a recipe in like a book or even on YouTube, you know, like it's, and it, it feels um, less intimidating. Yeah, more like community focused, you know. Mm -hmm. Especially, and there's so much history behind our foods. So there's so much um, stories and so much, it's tied so much back to our creation story. And there's so much in our foods that we take for granted that um, where all our foods came from. And I'm going to try, um, like what my friends, a few friends are doing, is like, I'm gonna, I, I save the seeds. So they're going to um, basically, I guess, kind of gargle with their seeds and get their DNA into the seeds. And I'm going to try and see, like, next year how how the um, squash are going to grow um, compared to my green DNA. And and their thoughts is that it's going to um, whatever's missing in my body, whatever nutrients and whatever I need, it's going to grow the plants that I need. Um, so we'll see That's how neat. this works next year. Cool. I'm sure nobody will <laughs> want to go that far, but <laughs> it's, that's it's, cool if they do, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then just like like I said, like picking the medicines um, where I planted my girls' belly buttons, um, and knowing that, that that's that was something we traditionally did, and we're still like well, your DNA is in that ground, and you're still connected to that earth, and you're still connected to those plants and medicines that grow on that earth. And Hubbard squash is one of the ones, and, and once we go back to our foods, and it's gonna feed our mind and our spirit. And like my apron says, it's just picking up your spirit. That's cool. Yeah, it's neat. Like, um, like I'm a settler, and so it's neat hearing the stories and the history, and like gives a better picture. Yeah, just like like helps to understand your teachings more, which like have so much richness to them. So Yeah. And that's the thing is like we're all walking, we're all from the same earth. We all come from the same earth. Mm -hmm. And our we're still we're all eating from the same earth. So we're we're all connected. We just need to remember that. For sure. Sasha stirring her soup. So do you want to show off your soup? <laughs> Do you want to show up your soup? Not to put you on the spot, you <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I can show off my soup. Ooh. I don't know if that works. Oh yeah, we can see it. There you go. <laughs> Good. That was tough to do with a laptop. But thank you very much for today. I really appreciated this. Yeah, this was great. Thank you. I um well like we're we haven't been working at the center since like March of last year. And when we had our lunch. Um, like me and our mentor advisor, David General, and 
Miles and Melissa, we'd spend like all of Tuesday prepping our food and like laughing and socializing. So this was like really nice just to like have that sense of community while cooking. We had to um, like clear out our freezer at work. So I had a bunch of like frozen squash and beans. So I didn't use fresh today, I used frozen, but it still tastes really good. So I'll have to try fresh soon. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. new shake, this is so good. Yeah, I just want to say Nyawa for uh, coming on, showing us and stuff. It's really great. Um, just reminds me a lot of home. Yeah, uh, I, and it's when we cook at our cook house, like this, we, we laugh, we laugh through the whole thing, and that's yeah. the energy that we put in our foods, and that's what we need to be feeding our kids. Yeah, for sure. I just realized I was the only guy in the cooking thing today, so. That was <laughs> <interesting>. <laughs> Yay! Well, I didn't order I just want to sing <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm going to go now. I got, I got to study and stuff today. So thank you. Thanks for joining in. I'll yeah, say now, maybe we should all post our finished soup on Instagram on IS or Indigenous Student Services. I'm going to yeah. see if um, my kids eat it and I'll, I'll capture that. Yeah, I just want to say if you want to, um, if you want to share your soups, um, can you tag both us at ISC and also OCAD's uh, university's um, Instagram handle? Melissa, you may have to, um, sorry, or Reagan, you may have to um, remind me of uh, who, what your guys' Instagram handle is, if so, if people want to tag both. Yeah, it's just ISC at OCADU, but like at AT, so ISC AT OCADU. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I see A T O C A D U. Yeah. That's your, yeah, that's a long handle. Okay. I, know. Just, I didn't make it, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, I just want to say thank you, Teresa, for um, for having this and showing us all how to how to cook. It's been really great. Um, and just want to say thank you all for coming. Um, we did record this, so um, we're gonna try and get it up maybe hopefully by next week. So if you did um, did miss a couple steps or anything like that, we should hopefully be able to have it online on our website and I'll also make sure to share it with um, OCAD as well. And then um, you guys can always have um, Teresa showing you how to make the soup at home. So. And you can um, I know I go really fast. <laughs> <laughs> you can um, so um, I guess just before going, um, I guess maybe Teresa, if you have any closing words, and then I'll let um, I'll let you guys at OCAD finish it all off for us, and then we can we can head out. Can I yeah. can I say something real quick? Yes. Um, I just wanted to say I'll go, Auntie. Oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> You know, go Auntie for teaching us, you know, the soup, how to make soup. But it's not just about making soup. You taught so much about like the teachings and how the food affects us and our bodies. And you carry so much knowledge and I didn't want to cry. <laughs> um, but you have so much knowledge within you and I just wanted to say I won't go for sharing all that you have today. Thank you, Sasha. Um, Teresa, do you want to say anything before we close out? Um, just um, be brave. Um, don't be intimidated by by seeing that Hubbard squash and I can do this. I can figure this out and and try our foods. Google our foods. Um, go back to our teachings and uh, and that's going to feed your spirit. You're, you're not just feeding your body, you're feeding your spirit. Um, and just be brave, just be brave and grab that Hubbard squash off the shelf and take it home and let's see what we can do with it. Yes, thank you. And um, yes, I've already said thank you again for coming. Um, I'll just give it over to you guys, Melissa and Reagan, if Reagan's, or if one, Reagan or Ms. or what do you guys want to, I don't know if both of you are still there, but if you want to close out for us and then. I realized after I logged on that um, Melissa's email is on like the Zoom account, so I thought she was here, but it was just me and her, oh. her email. <laughs> so anyway, 
Um, but yeah, I just want to say a uh, new shake to uh, Joy and Zita for coordinating this with us and to Teresa for um, providing that recipe and uh, sharing your knowledge with us. That was really great. And uh, to all of you for um, coming out. I know there's a lot going on right now, especially for students and feel like everyone's caring a lot right now. So it was really nice to meet some of you virtually and uh, I hope your school semester is winding down nicely and you have like a really relaxing holiday break, everyone. So yeah, Anushik, the pitch can they will All right, everybody have a wonderful day. Enjoy your soup. And um, we will see you guys. We will see your soups online. So <laughs> all right, bye everybody. Bye.